Hello everyone! If you're watching this video, it means that you are probably planning for your graduate study, right? Before we start, let us introduce ourselves. My name is Pradini Puspitaning Ayu. I am from Indonesia. I am a third year PhD student from Okayama University. And my name is Yuhan. I come from China. I'm a second year master's student at Okayama University. This video is sponsored by Studying Japan, an initiative project from Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science, and Technology. This time, we are going to share our thoughts and experience on constructing a research plan for graduate study. Without further ado, let's start! Deciding to continue your study after getting a bachelor's degree, especially board, can be challenging, right? First, you need to have a professor who is willing to supervise the research when you contact him. Except for your CV, you may have to prepare a research proposal. So generally, a research proposal is a concise and coherent summary of your research. It addresses the issues and questions you would like to study or solve. Don't be afraid to prepare a research proposal. You may have chance to discuss it with your supervisor. Unlike undergraduate study, in master or PhD programs, students are not only attending classes but also required to do a specific research. And it often starts at the beginning of the study. That's why having a research plan will be a great benefit. You need to explain what you are going to study, why is it, where, when, who, and how you are going to do it. So. Here are the typical components of a research proposal or research plan. First is, of course, the title, followed by an abstract, background, motivation, research method, significance, timeline, and ended with a bibliography. Although located at the beginning of your research, the title and abstract should be the last things for you to worry about. Before we dive into the details of the following sections, we sure need a topic. Choosing a topic. It's very hard, right? Definitely, that's the hardest part. But first, why do we need to do research? Basically, because we are interested in something and we want to know more about it. So ask yourself, what are things that draw your interest and use your previous knowledge or education to dig deeper about it? So how can we find a topic? Anyway, I am studying in the Graduate School of Natural Science and Technology while Shu Han is in the Graduate School of Education. So, we will try to break things down into the perspective of social science and natural science. In natural science, we gather data by doing experiments and observation in a laboratory. We analyze the physical outcome based on scientific methods, and some computational methods can be involved as well for data gathering, analysis, or simulation. And because it is a closed system, the result tends to be somewhat predictable, although the reality, it won't be as easy as that. In social science, we gather data from human experience and response. Different with natural science, we work in a liberal and open system, so it is traceable to a certain time in history. For example, my research focuses on human relationships. It is based on human and society, so it can differ from countries to countries and people to people. So, the topic actually comes from our life. You just need to discover it. Next, after we get into the topic, let's make sure that what we intend to do has the impact socially and scientifically. What could be the background? And are there some previous similar studies in this area? To dig deeper and find the needs of our research topic, it's important to understand the basic of research so that we won't end up doing something that is outdated or way too ambitious. 
To make sure that your research is worthy, you need to find several references, especially from academic papers, which can support your statement. You can also offer an improvement of the previous result. After you break things down, you can build a motivation for why you need to do your research. Yes, the background of the study is based on very many previous studies. Here, you need to summarize the state of the art of your topic. The most important thing here is to read many scientific papers to enrich your background. By reading the previous studies, you can also understand what the objectives and the limitations of the current studies are. In this way, your motivation for doing your research in this field will be either having a new objective or to solve the current problems. After we realize the motivation, we need to plan a way to solve the issues. Here, we define what kind of data that we need, how to interpret it, or do you need any specific tools or software. In natural science, it's we define the, what is the data type and um, the tools and the mathematical formula that we are going to use. We need to able to foresee how things are going to unfold because we are using the scientific method. In this part, we need to justify every choice that we make, including the limitation. Don't worry about stating your limitation here because you can do everything at once. So this is where the difference lies. The field in social science is broad. But we still can divide the methodologies into literature survey, data analysis, questionnaire survey, interview survey, and so on. As we know that it is a science about people, it is difficult for us to do experiments to control variables to get the right data like natural science. So what we need to do is to build on our theoretical physics and get more use of the available data. As the following links, we can get a lot of data. Mm. So these differences in methodology between social science and natural science can also have an impact on the importance of the study. So let's move on to the research significance. Here, we need to explain how our research may bring benefit in the general field. How original is it? What makes it stand out? And what will you bring as a result? To put it simply, you need to state the importance of your research. Additionally, in grad school, we often need to write some scientific papers either for conferences or journal publications. That's what makes research project different than a commercial project. So your research have to be planned carefully because you need to think by doing this project, you should be able to publish papers. Once again, enrich your knowledge by reading related papers. Now let's get back to title and abstract. After you find your topic, decide what you are going to investigate and how you're going to do it, you can arrange a set of keywords and put it into a phrase. Then voila, your title is ready. Don't take too much time to think about the perfect title because, well, once again, it will eventually change. Yes, in fact. For a long time, I couldn't decide on a specific title. It just followed the directions of the research or the result, and the final title came naturally. Then let's make a summary of research plan into 100 to 150 words as an abstract. Since it is a proposal, an abstract should only consist of a short summary of your background, followed by motivation and your proposed method. We're coming near to the ending, the research timeline. In doing research, we need to make a timeline of how we are going to have progress, what you are going to do in the first year, in the second year, or in the third year if you are doing PhD. Although things may not be as easy as it planned, in this timeline, you're showing the prospective supervisor that you have a step-by-step -step plan in accomplishing your research during a limited period, either two or three years of study. The last part, bibliography, at the end of your proposal, included a list of references for building your background motivations, and even the method you are proposing in this study. 
experts in this field should be able to distinguish good papers. And here, you need to make sure that your references are solid. Always remember that there are many formats for the final citation literature. What you need is to give a visual reflection that you will be a good researcher. Well, we finally finished everything. Again, your research plan may change according to your supervisor or lab research focus. Having a regular consultation in every step of the process is very important. To summarize everything, here are the golden rules to make an appealing research proposal. If you are interested to continue your study in Japan like us, you can find more information of Study in Japan Facebook and Instagram. We often host seminars and small lectures from professors around Japan, so keep updated. We wish you all the best. Bye-bye!